There's no better time to take a second look at a smartphone than on the eve of the debut of its replacement. So before I jet off to Barcelona to see the LG G6, one of this year's big contenders, let's spend a quick minute with its predecessor, one of last year's biggest flops. I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is the review redo of the LG G5. Normally I hit the good stuff first, but for this one, we need to reverse that order. Because understanding the G5 first requires understanding where it failed. This was the first mainstream smartphone that really tried to be modular. It was designed so that you could pop the bottom off and replace it with any of a number of accessories that LG called friends. Problem was in the execution. Of the friends we saw at last year's Mobile World Congress, the Bang & Olufsen sound module never made it to North America, the VR headset was received poorly, and the LG 360 proved to be about as niche a product as every other 360-degree camera. That left only the camera grip attachment to wow the audience, and it was a cool little accessory, but the whole process of swapping friends was tedious. You needed to power off the phone and slide out the sled, exposing the whole inside of the phone in the process, then power it back on once you'd reconnected everything. Just a couple months after the G5's debut, Motorola showed up on the scene to show everyone how a modular phone is really done with the Moto Z, with a much larger ecosystem of hot swappable mods that's still growing today. Couple that with the G5's hardware. While it is a metal phone, it's coated in a textured primer and paint combination that makes it feel like a plastic one. That coating doesn't hold up well over time. It shows dents and drops and flakes much more than an unpainted metal chassis would. And I dropped my G5 often enough that to shoot this video, I needed to pick up a replacement from my local Best Buy. More on that in a second. You can't really blame a phone for shattering when it's dropped onto concrete, but software defects are another story. Some of LG's phones have been prone to boot looping, where the phone endlessly restarts. And while I haven't had the problem on my devices, I've seen reports of it happening to other G5s on a few forums. Also, LG has been slow to roll out the latest Android update to the G5. At press time, Nougat is finally being pushed to AT&T devices, but my unlocked unit here still doesn't have it. So, after all that, what's there to like about this thing? In a word, the camera. LG knows what it's doing when it comes to optics, and the G5's implementation is perfect for the person who's always taking photos on the go. Next to the 16 megapixel primary sensor is an 8 megapixel camera with a 135 degree field of view. That means you can shoot GoPro like wide angle photos to capture more of a scene. Best of all, you don't even need to think about it. The interface switches between standard and wide angle sensors automatically based on your zoom level. I used the G5 for about two weeks last summer, while the Mr. Mobile channel was still coming together. It's actually the phone I used when choosing the space that would eventually become my studio. If there's one thing I miss about the G5, the camera is it. Other features common at the G5's release have become more valuable in retrospect. The 3.5mm headphone jack is backed up by capable audio hardware, even without the ill-fated B&O module. The IR transmitter means you can use the phone as a remote control with supported devices. And the phone's straightforward construction makes it easy to repair if you do manage to break it. I still can't stand LG's interface, but if you replace it with something like Nova Launcher, you can paint over the ugliest aspects. Same with the battery situation. They're smaller power packs than I'd recommend to anyone, but the fact that you can carry spares around and swap them in makes that shortcoming a lot easier to live with. As someone who watched Judge Judy as a kid, I know better than to pee on your leg and tell you it's raining. Would I recommend the G5 to anyone looking for an excellent phone? No, I would not. But I would recommend it to someone looking for a great phone camera at an affordable price. Last year saw the coming of age of the $400 smartphone, and the G5's new price tag puts it right there. If you're considering a OnePlus or Moto Z or Honor 8, but you really need some fancier glass, 
the G5 might actually be worth a look. And its spec sheet trounces most of its competitors in that segment, too. For the rest of us, the G5 serves as a catalog of pluses we hope to see in the G6 and missteps we hope it avoids. If LG can deliver the same great camera experience with better software in a more premium design, it may well have a hit on its hands. That'll likely require forfeiting the modular market to the folks at Motorola, but maybe that's for the best. Do you own a G5? Or how about a V20? And what do you think about the G6? Chime in with your LG feedback in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss the latest mobile tech from MWC. Till next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.